Cowboy casserole go. Let a whole bag of tater tots thaw. In a pan, melt butter, add one whole onion, stir. Add in one and a half pounds of ground beef, half green bell pepper. In a bowl, one can of cream of mushroom, one can of rotel, half a cup of milk, and one fourth a cup of sour cream, whisk together. Once your meat is done, drain it, add it to the mixture. Then you're gonna add one can of drained corn. Grease the casserole dish, add in half of the tater tots, the mixture, then the other half of tater tots on top, add cheese, bake at 375 for 30 minutes, and it's so good. Start with two pounds of ground chicken, and then you're gonna add in two tablespoons of garlic powder. I did one tablespoon of garlic powder and one tablespoon of this garlic lover seasoning from Flavor God because it's amazing. Then add in two eggs, four tablespoons of your favorite keto-friendly marinara sauce, one onion diced up, one cup of cheddar cheese, one teaspoon of salt. I love this rosemary salt, but you can just use regular salt. And one teaspoon pepper. I don't like touching meat with my hands, so in the mixer it goes. Spread it and pack it into a casserole dish or a meatloaf pan. Pop it in the oven at 375 for 30 minutes. Pull it out and sprinkle with some more cheese and bake it again for 30 more minutes. Y'all, everyone in my family went back for seconds. It's so good. I'm gonna show you how to make homemade crunch wraps. Start by making taco meat however you normally do. At the same time, also heat up a can of nacho cheese. I have my large tortillas, small tortillas, tostadas, taco meat, nacho cheese, sour cream, lettuce, and tomatoes. You're gonna start with your big shell and put your taco meat right in the center. And then you're gonna put a layer of nacho cheese all over the meat. Now you're gonna take a tostada and you're gonna put a thin layer of sour cream on one side. And then you're gonna set it sour cream side up on your nacho cheese. And then add your lettuce on top of that. And then you're gonna add your tomatoes. Then you're gonna add your small tortilla on top. And then you're gonna fold your tortilla up like this all the way around. And then you're gonna put it seam side down in a hot pan until the bottom is toasted. And then once that side's toasted, flip it over and toast the other side. And when it's done, it'll look something like this. Okay, y'all, I'm about to teach y'all how to make next level spinach and artichoke dip. Let's go. Okay, so now we're gonna add a cup and a half of heavy whipping cream to our bowl. Now go ahead and add two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Okay, so we mix the flour in. Now let's go to the microwave. Now after three one-minute sessions in the microwave, look at the consistency. Now go ahead and add eight ounces of cream cheese, a quarter teaspoon of pepper, a must. You have to add a little bit of hot sauce, whatever kind you have. One tablespoon of garlic, and start with a half a tablespoon of salt. One cup of Parmesan cheese, mix it in well. Put eight ounce cans of the artichoke hearts, drain them and cut them down bite size. Now go ahead and add all your artichoke hearts right on in. Now we're gonna add in 16 ounces of the frozen spinach. Now we go ahead and take all this goodness and we're gonna put it into a pan. Get on and scrape every last bit out cause you're gonna want it. Grade two cups of Monterey cheese, go across the top of the oven on 350 for 25 minutes. Time to eat. Who's ready for some epic food? I'm coming back at you with another beautiful Australian grass-fed beef recipe. Now let's go! Thick cut fries with sweet potato, avocado oil, little Gilbert action, rosemary salt. If you know, you know! Give it a really good mix. Spread them out and then straight into a 400 degree oven. Toss these a few times as they roast. Strip a bunch of kale, slice up that kale, and pour over the dressing. Parmigiano Reggiano to taste. Really massage for a couple minutes. Temper your beef half an hour. Rosemary salt again. Gilbert action. One thing I really love about the Australian beef industry is their goal to go completely carbon neutral by the year 2030. And they're doing great because they're halfway there. High heat pan, neutral oil. Drop your beef, about three minutes and flip. Sear another minute and reduce the heat. Some spring shallot, crushed garlic, butter. Pan back and baste. Two, three minutes of basting and rest. Kale salad, sweet potato fries, our Australian grass-fed beef. Let's do this. Healthy and oh so delicious. You know I love you, animal. Okay, for all my Nando's chicken and rice fans, I got you with this recipe. It's so good and easy to make, so let's do it. First step is to marinate our chicken. The full measurements will be on Instagram, so I'd love if you check that out too. In a pan with some olive oil, we add our peppers, onions, and garlic. Now we're going to add our chicken stock, which you can also sub for water and chicken bouillon cubes. Make sure to spice your rice as well, and you could add chili flakes to taste depending on how spicy you like it. Add your rinsed rice, cover it, and let it simmer for 18 minutes. And while the rice is doing its thing, we're going to cook our chicken, get it nice and golden brown, and brush it with your favorite Nando's Peri Peri sauce. When our rice is done, you're going to fluff it up with a fork. 
Now it's time to add our peas and sprinkle that cilantro on generously too. Now just add your chicken on top and you could garnish it with some more cilantro as well. Be sure to follow along if you'd like to see more and enjoy. Hello! I wanted to combine my two favorite things in life, sausage rolls and Chinese dumplings. Introducing Chinese sausage rolls. So in a bowl, combine one kilo of pork mince, finely diced chives and sprig onions, add half a cup of garlic and ginger paste, then a third cup of sesame oil, a third cup of Chinese wine, a third cup of dark soy sauce, lots of white pepper, and just a tiny bit of salt. Remember the soy sauce is quite salty. And now thanks to the magic of TikTok. So grab some puff pastry and basically you want to assemble it exactly as I am here, brush it with egg wash and then sesame seeds. Pop them into a 200 degree oven fan forced for about 15 to 20 minutes or until golden brown. You pretty much have to eat them straight away because they are nice and juicy. Okay, this is crazy, but you dip them in a mix of soy sauce and rice wine vinegar as well as chili oil and you Last night's dinner was Merg Makani, otherwise known as butter chicken. We've got two pounds of chicken thighs. You can use chicken breast, but chicken thighs are much better, flavorful, better for keto, more fat. To the chicken, we added a tablespoon of turmeric, two teaspoons of ground ginger, two teaspoons of pink Himalayan salt, one and a half teaspoons of chili powder, and a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. To a pan, we added four tablespoons of butter, and we sweat out four cloves of garlic, chopped up, and a half an onion. Cook that chicken until it's just white, just barely, not quite cooked through. Three tablespoons of tomato paste and two cups of heavy whipping cream. Cook that around until it gets that beautiful orange color. Turn down to medium low and let it simmer for five to seven minutes. Look at that beautiful color. Give it a good stir. Make sure all the ingredients are incorporated well together. We serve this over some cauliflower rice. In the rice, there was some turmeric, some cayenne, some garam masala. Just kind of give those Indian flavors as well. A little scallion on top and I got to get a taste. This was so good last night. I am about to blow your mind. These chicken tenders aren't actually made with chicken. They're made with tofu. I make mine in the air fryer and they get super crispy. It looks like chicken, tastes like chicken, but it's super healthy and doesn't cause any animal cruelty. Best 15 second dessert. Two cans of pie cherry filling. One pack devil's food cake. Don't mix it. Two sticks of butter sliced thin into a 350 degree oven. I got another recipe for you guys. Preheat your oven to 375 and then season your chicken. I do salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and the season it all. In your casserole dish, you're gonna pour the rice chicken flavor, and then pour two cans of cream of chicken, and fill up one of your cream of chickens with some chicken broth, and then stir that all together. I'm gonna put a little bit of onion powder and the season it all in with this mixture. Now you're just gonna start placing your chicken in with the rice, and then you want to cover it with foil and bake it in the oven for about an hour. And I will let y'all know what it looks like when I'm done. Hey y'all, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret and share my favorite crock pot recipe with y'all. Go ahead and get your cube steak, flour it on both sides, heat up some oil in your skillet, and then you wanna sear the cube steak on both sides. You're not trying to cook it all the way through because it's gonna finish out in your crock pot, but searing it before you put it in there is gonna lock in some flavor and help create a gravy. Now for your gravy, you wanna take a pack of brown gravy mix, a can of cream of mushroom soup, and two cups of water, stir that really good, and then pour that over your cube steak. Go ahead and close your lid and cook on low for eight hours. I did this before I left for work this morning. So all I had to do when I got home today in the rain was make some potatoes, make some cornbread, make some peas, and there you go. Easy crock pot supper that tastes just like grandma's cooking. Cheeseburger, you're gonna toast your bun, two small burger patties, put them in a pan, salt and pepper, keep them nice and flat. Cook them all the way through. Put one patty down, one cheese, another patty, another cheese, yellow mustard, ketchup, very finely diced onion, two pickle slices. Then you're gonna wrap it in parchment paper, just like this. Hopefully you don't have to do it one-handed. So next comes the real trick. You're gonna take it and put it in the microwave for 15 seconds. 
And when you're done, double cheeseburger. Tastes exactly like McDonald's. Boom. Grab two gigantic bulbs of garlic, or about four regular size. Cut off the tops to expose the cloves, cover in foil, and bake at 400 degrees until soft. Once they're cool, squeeze out all the roasted garlic. It smells so good. Get your tomatoes. These are the ones I used. We need two 28 ounce cans. To the tomatoes, add your roasted garlic, quarter cup of oregano, some red pepper, black pepper, and sea salt. Mix it all up and let it cook for at least an hour. Then grab your immersion blender or pop the whole mixture in a blender until you get the texture you like for marinara sauce. Finally, add some fresh basil and you are set to use this sauce however you like. All right, don't make fun of my pronunciation, but we're gonna make some elote wings. Start off by drying off your chicken wings and coating them in some baking powder. I do one tablespoon per pound, and then I mix those together and throw them on a lined baking sheet with some parchment paper. I put them skin side down for 30 minutes at 400, flip them over and crank the heat up to 450 for another 30 minutes. This sauce was inspired by Chef Risha. This is where you can find her recipes. Mine's a little different. I'm using butter instead of mayonnaise. This is half a stick of butter melted, about half a cup of cotija cheese, some tahine, and this is optional, but I added a little bit of Valentina because I thought that sounded good. I like my wings super crispy, so I took them out when they looked something like that, threw them in a bowl, and mixed them together with the sauce. These were seriously the best wings ever. I wish I could say I thought. Super easy chicken breast recipe. Pat your chicken dry, add some mayonnaise, spread it across the chicken breast. Set your oven to 350, add some cheese. I use mozzarella and cheddar. Put your seasonings on. These are the ones that I use, but you can use whatever you like. Put in the oven for 30 minutes. It comes out delicious. Hey guys, finally dropping the recipe. Add your bay leaves, add your garlic, add some red onions, add some chicken bouillon, and you boil for about two hours. While your meat's cooking, you're just going to want to de-seed all your chilies. After you peel your red chili, your ancho chili, and your chili apples, you're just going to want to wash the chili really good. After you wash it, boil for 25 to 30 minutes. So now for your chili, you're going to want to put some garlic, some onions, a little bit of cumin, some chicken bouillon, some oregano. Don't use hot water. Use your beef broth. So I cut the meat up in chunks and shred it with this. You add the meat and the chili to the pan, cook for another hour. You dip all your corn tortillas, add cheese, add meat, and enjoy. So Chipotle tweeted their secret guac recipe. Let's give it a try. Two avocados, spoon it into the bowl. Lime juice, cilantro, red onion. My eyes burn. Into the bowl. Jalapeno, pour some heat. Finally, some salt bay action. Smash it up. And now this guac doesn't cost extra. It's fire. All right, so I get asked all the time, can you do pulled pork on a gas grill? Absolutely you can. Most of you know, I usually use mustard as a binder. However, mayonnaise this time, oh yeah, mayonnaise, adds as a layer of fat and keeps that moisture in. I'm using my buddy Sasquatch Barbecue, his new lineup of rubs, and here is the setup for the gas smoker. I have only one burner on that has the gas tube with pellets in it. I have a water pan and my two butts indirect. I rotate every 30 minutes until they reach an internal temp of 165. Throw them in a pan, add some apple juice, wrap them back up, back on the smoker until they hit an internal temperature of about 203 or until they're probe tender. Throw them in a cambro, let them rest for at least an hour or two, and oh, look at that clean bone pull on both of them. Then shred it up, mix that juice with it, Money, guys. Is it Hanukkah? No. Is it a great time to fry up some latkes? Hell yes. I'm going to share with you my recipe for crispy potato pancakes. Start by peeling two pounds of russet potatoes. We are going to cut them in half as well as you're going to need half a yellow onion. We're going to coarsely grate this in a food processor. You can also do this with a box grater. Once it's all shredded, throw it into a bowl that's lined with a towel or cheesecloth and squeeze out all of the liquid. You're going to let that sit for a few minutes and then pour it off to reveal a layer of potato starch at the bottom. This is going to help get it crispy. Add in your shreds, then crack in 
four eggs, add two teaspoons of salt, and half a cup of matzo meal. We're going to mix this by hand until it comes together. Heat a thin layer of oil in a large skillet, and we are going to fry third cup size scoops of the laka mixture. You just gotta smash them down and let them fry for about two to three minutes until they are crispy and golden. Flip them, get them golden on the other side, and then throw them on a tray that's lined with paper towels to drain. Once you got that, they're all done. You just have to make sure that you're dipping them in applesauce, of course. Looking for a potluck recipe to wow a crowd? This is the dumbest thing I've ever said. I got you. Two to three pounds red potatoes, cubed in a bite-sized pieces. Boil till soft. While those are boiling, take a 16 ounce container of sour cream and a packet of ranch, mix those together. And cook up your bacon. I like to bake mine because it's fast and mess free. Uh, 400 degrees for about 10 minutes. Perfection. Strain and cool. Taters, ranch, shredded cheddar, crumbled bacon, some chives. I don't have fresh today, so dried it is. Mix it all up. Chill for about an hour before serving. It's the best. You know when we were kids and some people used to eat butter by itself? I always thought it was a little gross, but I could literally eat this garlic herb compound butter off of a spoon. And it takes 30 seconds to make. All you need is one stick soft butter, three tablespoons parsley, one tablespoon basil, two cloves garlic, that came in hot, and lemon zest. Mix very well. You can also add salt and pepper to taste, but I used salted butter, so it was fine. Next, lay out. Plastic wrap, add your butter mixture in the middle, and roll into a log. To seal it, all you need to do is twist the ends. Now refrigerate it for at least one hour. The best part about this is that it looks fancy, and it's so easy to make. I use it to make garlic bread in pasta sauces, or obviously just eating it off a slice of bread. Seriously, it's so good. Just try it. Do at me if you do. This is how I make my fried mac and cheese balls. So I start off with some leftover mac and cheese, shape them into balls. In your next bowl, crack two eggs and whisk. Panko crumbs and salt. In another bowl, all-purpose flour. Dredge your balls. Throw into the egg mixture and coat evenly. Then into the panko. Back into the egg and back into the panko once again. I have my oil going pretty hot and I just fry them for about five minutes, tossing them around and you're done. Soft in the middle and crispy on the outside, sweet potato chunks. Start by chopping your sweet potato into similar sized chunks and put those into a tray with a generous amount of olive oil. And make sure the oil is coating all of the potatoes. And place those in the oven for 30 minutes at 170 to 180 degrees Celsius. Take those out and then season them with salt, pepper, garlic granules, oregano, smoked paprika, and a couple pinches of sugar. Mix that seasoning around to coat the potatoes evenly. Then put those back in the oven for 15 minutes at the same temperature and then strain them on kitchen. Roll. Transfer those to a serving bowl and hit them with a little bit of flaky salt and some fresh parsley. And that's how I make... Hi guys, guess what day it is? It's Tabbouleh Tuesday. Kind of like Taco Tuesday, but for us Lebanese, it's all about the tabbouleh. Start off by soaking the parsley, add salt and vinegar. Repeat this process at least three times until the water is not so murky. Then dry your parsley on the side and repeat the process for your mint and your green onions. Remove the long stems and start chopping your parsley. Keep chopping until it's super fine. You can do this in a food processor, but I love hand chopped parsley. I mean, just look at that consistency. Add your green onions and then chop the mint. You want this really fine too. You need one cup of mint for three bunches of parsley. Chop three medium tomatoes. Soak a third cup of birgul in your tomatoes and tomato juices. This will soften the birgul up. After 15 minutes, add it to your parsley. Add salt, mint, sama, lemon, and oil. Mix that baby up and get your pita bread out. Definitely a thick and saucy tabbouleh. This is my go-to recipe for super flavorful and juicy chicken. To one pound of chicken tender, squeeze in a quarter of a lemon, then go in with a quarter cup of Nando's Peri Peri sauce. You can buy this stuff off Amazon, trust me, it's incredible. Then add in two cloves of minced garlic, followed by some cracked black pepper, about a teaspoon of chopped fresh oregano, a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt, and a quarter teaspoon of lemon pepper. Toss well to coat. Heat a cast iron skillet on medium high heat and add in a few teaspoons of olive oil. Cook the chicken for about four minutes per side or until it reaches about 165 degrees. You can baste the chicken with the leftover marinade between flips. I served mine over some marinated kale, cherry tomatoes, and leftover paella. 